question. And I want you to answer yourself quietly but honestly. Do you drive a car or do you drive an affectation? I'll repeat that. Do you drive a car or do you drive an affectation? If you are like most people, your car is more than just a means of safe transport, safe and reliable transport, and you know it. It is a reflection of you, or so you think. Your ego thinks, I've got to create the right image. And the moment you're thinking that, even if it's albeit almost subconsciously, you are driving an affectation. How many times have you seen an ordinary car suddenly done up with all sorts of fins all over it? Four exhaust pipes looking like four the muzzles of four 40 metre 40 millimetre Bofors, Bofor guns sticking out the back when a half inch pipe would have been enough to cope with the engine. And of course the noise. There are some people who tune their cars for noise. Coming home today, I watched a, a motorcyclist come around the corner dressed in black. He roared away on his motorbike and the, the volume, unbelievable. It was like a Boeing 747 taking off. Of course, he had probably knocked the mufflers out of his tailpipes so that it would make as much noise as possible. And to him, this was a status symbol. Oh, I've got a big, powerful motorbike. How many of us are like that? We put on the dog, as they call it, the affectation. A car perhaps bigger than we really need, one that takes almost 10 minutes to get by a given point, just so that we can say, we have a big car, and I can afford a big car. Fair enough if you can, but there are a lot of people who go in hock just to look good. They might be in rented accommodation and yet driving the, the newest brand new Mercedes Benz. Not paid off, of course. So the point I'm asking this, answer this quietly to yourself. Do you really drive a car because it's a means of transport, safe transport, reliable transport? Or do you drive an affectation? I'm betting that you drive the latter. Most of us do.